Good morning, church. Good morning. We're just getting ourselves sorted here, but uh, lovely day here outside, weather-wise, it's beautiful. And isn't that fantastic just to, to see the sun? We're celebrating Jesus the sun and his rising from the dead today and what that means for us. So we're going to sing a few songs about that. Our second song is going to be a bit sort of uh, slower but it's full of meaning and it just seems so appropriate to, to sing Living Hope. But this first one, Alive in Us, is of course about Holy Spirit, who is, has, Jesus has sent to us. So please stand with us as we, as we worship our Lord this morning and it's a day of celebration.
Someone, oh no, there we are. As I was just saying, usually for the Sunday school, we um, do the couple of fast songs, two or three, and then after that they go out to Sunday school. But uh, we're on the school holidays at the moment. And uh, so I'm just, I was just talking to a lady and telling her all about it, so I'll finish it on the mic. <laughs> but uh, let, let me hear you all say, He's risen. He is risen. Amen. He, he has conquered death. And we will never die. Isn't that good? Amen. Amen. I, I love that. It makes me feel good. <laughs> so welcome to church today. There's not a, a lot of ads today. Uh, everything's sort of running back to normal. Uh, next week, I'll be here in the morning. Still thinking about, I think I'll get these shoulder and good to see you, Mark and Ruby. I, I want to see you after if it's okay and we'll catch up. Thanks. 
lovely young couple. <laughs> and um, so we're going to, um, uh, yeah, just run the Sunday services for a little while. I'm going to get this arm better in. Oh, what, I've had a, people saying, what's up? So I had a spur taken off my shoulder, uh, you know, a little bone growth, and it was giving me curry. And um, I had a lot of, uh, or a fair bit of pain. It was getting a bit worse and trying to sleep on that side, you know, and then you get in pain and you roll over and I was getting prayer for it. I did that. Believe you me, I've seen very many miracles, but I want to say today, God's will to heal everybody. Amen. But I don't want to sound negative, but everybody doesn't get healed. That's just a fact. That's not the truth, but it's a fact. So some people in the old Pentecostal movement, in my opinion, had a lot of faith and were good people. They wouldn't go to doctors. I think they're stupid. Sorry. It's my opinion. Take it or leave it. But I think that God uses doctors and doctors help people and they're probably helping most of us in the church and we shouldn't ever run doctors down and say things we should say thank god for them because god uses them whether they're saved or not saved and god god will use when my stomach when i nearly died i could always feel the holy spirit come inside me and was healing me i could feel the tingling that was between god and a doctor and i believe god showing me that truth i think i've saved a few lives um i've had people in the office i'm not going the doctor pastor and I say, look, I think you should go to the doctor. And you don't have enough faith, Pastor. Oh, yes, I do. I think you should go. And, you know, if they hadn't gone, I think they might have been in trouble. Um, but, look, if God tells you not to go to the doctor and you get a word from God and it's verbal from heaven, then go for it. Um, I've done things and thrown tablets in the things and, you know, in years past and... Just, I've just done that because I felt God tell me and never looked back. But I think on other times I had to go <laughs> because um, it just kept, I was doing physio, I was doing um, exercise with it, I was praying, I had people pray for me. It didn't move. And I thought, well, I'll go to the doctor and... Uh, Within two, she said in two weeks, she's getting it operated on. I didn't even have time to tell people, but she's cut it around here, moved a couple of tendons and took a burr off. I've got to, I've got to have patience because it's going to be six weeks in this sling and then it'll come out and a bit of physio. Oh, I reckon give myself a few months and I'll be able to arm wrestle you again. It'll be, uh, <laughs> it'll be uh, back to reasonably normal. And uh, that'll be good. Uh, maybe give me a bit of time till I'm finding I'll get a little bit more time with God now at home and things. So, but, uh, I still got other stuff I got to do that I can do at one arm. Derek's on today. I think I'm on next week. So, uh, it's a good thing we've got a, a few preachers in the church and good team, and everything's good. Amen. So, I think what we'll do now is. Um, Bring our tithes and offerings. And again, a big thank you to everybody that uh, gives to the church, um, to the work of the church. You know, who knows? We don't need church to be saved. But the world needs the church. The Bible says the spirit and the bride say come. If there's no bride, no church, and we all isolate ourselves, then we don't really, we can't really get together and plan and, touch the world and touch the nations I'm hoping to do a trip to Alice Springs in October, September, October um, with some friends until we want to bring some revival over there to the Aboriginals so even though we can't get overseas it's good that God's opening local doors for mission work and um, so we're hoping to do that and our whole church is geared around um, seeing people you know, populating heaven and plundering hill and I really think that's really good and, and discipling people and helping so we've got all the little groups and things running so we usually give there's a 
Um, it's on our website too, High Street Church web, if you ever want that number, uh, direct deposit. A lot of us just do that. It's pretty simple. I just do it once a month. It comes out and goes in. And um, the giving basket, that's up here for cash, gold rings, anything else. You've had some funny things in this offering basket at times. <laughs> and, um, and there's envelopes up the back which are for offerings, if, um, which are not your tithes, they're over and above for anything that, that you'd like to give to in the church, any mission work or other things as an extra, if you wish. Um, no pressure on that. We give 10% of what we receive every week, um, goes into mission fund and goes to missions anyway. So the church practices what um, we ask everyone else to practice and what we feel is a scriptural basis. Uh, and yet again... Um, if you come here and you don't do that um, and you can't afford to do that, um, that, that's fine. We're not, there's no charge for coming to church. It's not, you don't have to pay to come and anything. So, free. But if you come to that revelation, I've come to a revelation in my life. I can't afford not to give. I can't afford not to tithe. And I've done it all my life, even when I couldn't. And God just keeps blessing me, so... Um, it's all good. Anyway, let's have a look at this. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And uh, faith is now, often, um, and it's the substance. It is, faith is a substance. Um, you can't see it. It's uh, hard to get a hold of, but, you know, love's a substance too, isn't it? But it, it's very real. So faith is very real. It's a substance and it's the evidence of things not seen. So when you're believing for something, faith is the evidence. You might not see it, you might not have it, but you're declaring it, you're believing it. It's within scriptural boundaries. God wants you to have it. God wants you to break through in that area of your life. And I think that's a great thing. And that's what faith is. And, uh, you know, I've got an arm, shoulder here. I'm requiring faith to, to get better. I'm believing. And, uh, you know, whatever thing that's against you or thing that you have to see change your life, just have the faith. There are people here today, you need breakthroughs in areas of your life. Some of you got some desperate breakthroughs, desperate for you. And I know that, but God loves you. And God is going to break through for you and you keep trusting him. No matter what, trust him. Give today with great expectation for my God to do the impossible. And so, Father, I do thank you. I want to pray over the congregation, keeping us all safe from COVID as you have right through this thing. And I pray you continue to do that. And I also want to thank you for keeping our finances safe uh, and our economic situation because those are the two big calls at the moment, Lord. And um, we're not greedy. We're not about money at all, Lord. But we are about providing for our families and our lives and for those around us. And we thank you for all those things, Lord, that are a blessing. They come from heaven and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Well, you can um, come as a basket up the front and bring the tithe, bring the offering into the house of the Lord this morning for those that still do that that way. And thank you for all those that are electronically um, doing that every week.
Son of us, we celebrate you, Lord. We celebrate and declare your victory, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just am waiting on the Lord and 
I feel there's a number of people this morning in the congregation I really need a breakthrough. You really do need a breakthrough in some areas of your life, your personal life, your family life, relational life, your financial life, your health, whatever that might be, but you really need a breakthrough. And I feel the Lord saying, come to the altar, just come and stand here. And I'm just going to lay my hand on you and release the anointing of God for the breakthrough this morning. You are anointed, but God is with you, and we're going to uh, do that quickly today. Loose him in Jesus' name right now, Lord. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. All those that need a breakthrough today, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' name. Breakthrough, Father, breakthrough in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, breakthrough in Jesus' name. Upon her right now, Lord, right for right now. That's all you need. Breakthrough, Father. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Release it in Jesus' name. Release it in Jesus' name. Release it in the name of Jesus right now. Right here, right now. Breakthrough, Lord. I, I just get, mate, the Lord wants you to be obedient. Obedience will bring the breakthrough. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience will bring you breakthrough. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus this morning. Come to the altar. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Clear direction, Lord, in Jesus' name. Open wide. Thank you, Lord. I just uh, pray over each one today. Come on out, Kevin. Oh, well, that's fine. Stay there, mate. Stay there. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, we just pray for breakthrough. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Kevin, for his family, for his partner, Father, breakthrough. Thank you. You are the God of the breakthrough. Thank you, Lord. You are still the answer. You've always been the answer. We place our trust in you. And I thank you, Father. I pray the blood of Jesus Christ over Kevin and his family. And I thank you, Lord, for breakthrough, a marvelous and wonderful, victorious breakthrough in Christ. Father, teach them your ways. Show them your ways, Lord, and bless them, Father. And let the breakthrough begin. Let the breakthrough begin. There's the anointing right there. Fill, fill, fill in Jesus' name. Thank you, mate. Be careful with Bubby there. Amen. Hallelujah. Come to the altar. His arms are open wide. Uncleanness is bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, Lord. As we come to the altar, as we come to Jesus, this Resurrection Sunday, Father, He is risen. There is victory, Lord. Victory in the cross. There is victory in the resurrection in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Breakthrough, Father. Breakthrough, Father, in Jesus' name. Let the anointing break the yoke. Destroy the yoke, Father. Destroy the generational yokes, Father, in Jesus' name. Destroy them, break them in Jesus' name. Break every chain, Father, in Jesus' name today. Fill her with your presence. Renew her, Lord. 
Bless this little child, Father. Bless this family, Father, for breakthrough. Let them rise up in this hour, this Resurrection Sunday, Father. Day that Jesus, or the time we celebrate that Jesus rose from the dead. You know, we don't serve a, a dead God. We serve a God who is alive. Hallelujah. Too long the devil's tried to oppress us, keep us down and keep us mediocre in the Lord. The Lord wants a people that are sold out to him. 100% sold out. Sold out for the revival that's coming, the revival that's already upon us. <coughs> you better believe it. Because it's going to happen. It'll happen with you or without you. Because God is coming in great power. He wants to save a generation of people in our communities. People that have no hope. They, ha they do not have Christ. They need to know him. And we're going to hear about the greatest gift of all this morning from Pastor Derek. And so we praise God for that today. Hallelujah. Let's start, finish on. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whoa. Open wide. Give us was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Storms are open wide in us. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We'll break through, Lord. Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord, for breakthrough. <laughs> you know, John the Baptist said, may he increase and may I decrease. And that is my prayer. May we, may I decrease and may he increase. You know, as we die to self and, um, you know, it's God, God's in the house. It's nothing to do with me. It's God in the house. And um, I've just allowed, the Lord has used me today with one arm. Imagine if I had two, it would be twice as strong. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but, uh, may he increase and, and may we decrease because he's a great God. And we're going to ask, I think we'll ask Pastor Derek to come. I think it's um, a lovely anointing here. You can come and preach under that. And well, I'm just going to pray for Danny while he comes. Bless you, Danny. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you for breakthrough. Breakthrough, Lord, in Danny's life. Oh, the power of God's all over you, Danny. Hallelujah. You're just shaking under the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Just fill him with your presence, Lord, and your love, and bring the breakthrough, Lord. Thank you that he knows you. Continue to use him, Father, amongst his people, Father, as a witness and a sign and a wonder for you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lift your hands high, Danny. Lift them high. And Lord, just give him more, Lord. Give him more, Lord, and bring the breakthrough and all the lovely things that are in his heart, Father, in Jesus' name. We just pray for Danny's dad, for Manfred. We pray for his salvation. We pray for Karen and the children, the grandchildren. And we thank you for Karen and thank you for Danny who are strong witnesses to you, to their family. 
And we pray them, Father, into your kingdom, your blessing and your hand in Jesus' name. Woo! Funny how Lord. blowing in the microphone releases the anointing. <laughs> I don't know why, but it does. <laughs> Praise God. Thanks, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll just, um, let's just have a, I always start my sermons with a, or messages with a prayer, so let's just continue with that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence here today, Lord. Thank you that you're touching people, Father. God, that you're still, Lord, 2,000 years, Lord, and you're still touching people. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Touch your word today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. How are we all? We all good? All right. Well, the title of my message today is The Gift That Keeps On Giving. Okay. Um, now, today is Resurrection Sunday, as we've probably gathered by now. It's been mentioned a few times. Uh, but I, I'm not actually going to uh, preach on the resurrection. <laughs> okay. It is important. You remember that uh, we, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we celebrate the death of Jesus, and we celebrate the resurrection. And I think this is something, there's a fourth thing that I think we should celebrate. And that's what I'm going to preach about. Okay? Um, I believe that's what God wants me to do, so that's what I'm doing. Um, it, it's, this is the words of Jesus speaking to his disciples. You find this in, um, in John chapter 16, verse 7, and it says, But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away... The advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. So why is this passage so important to followers of Christ? Christ stated that it was for the good that he went away, not only for his current disciples, but also for all of those who would believe in his name. That's you and me. From that point on until he returns in triumph. This idea that it was, it was good for Jesus to go away was something that the disciples had trouble with. How could his leaving be a good thing? Peter in particular took objection to this idea and, and was rebuked for it. So the disciples and many others as well thought that Jesus was here to restore the kingdom of Israel to its former glory. You see, in Luke 24, verse 21, you've got the um, message of the, the two guys walking to the village of Emmaus, and Jesus pops up by the side of them, and he's walking along and, you know, asking them what's going on, and they say, oh, well, you're the only bloke in the, in the whole place that don't know what happened today. And, uh, and they don't know it's Jesus. Okay, there's a, a veil or, or something over their eyes. They don't know it's Jesus. And they, t and they say to him, that this man, this man called Jesus, they'd hoped that he was here to restore the, the, uh, the kingdom. And it was only when they got to Emmaus and they were inside that the veil was lifted from their eyes and they recognized who it was and immediately Jesus disappeared. And they, were all, they ran back to Jerusalem 12 miles or so to tell everybody that they'd seen Jesus. So... He had come to restore the kingdom, just not the kingdom of Israel. He had come to restore the kingdom of his father. Now, Jesus in his human form, now don't get me wrong here, now Jesus is, is God, but in his human form, he is limited or was limited to the number of people he could reach at any one time. Okay, he spoke to 5,000 people without the aid of a microphone, I might add. So his voice was something to, to behold, I think. I think if Jesus spoke to you, you'd know it. There'd be no if, buts, or ands. And Jesus speaks to you, you know it. But in his human form, he, he couldn't reach everybody. 
Okay, he couldn't be everywhere at once. Now, he tells us that he's going to send the advocate. Now, the advocate is not restricted to the confines of a physical body. So the advocate is able to reach individual pe people, persons, no matter where their location may be. No matter where you are in this entire world, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, can reach you and can do wonderful things. He can do things down the telephone line and he could bring healing to people on the other side of the world through the telephone line how do i know that well i've seen it i've done it and it works so jesus can do and the holy spirit can do anything but jesus uses the word advocate now the definition of an advocate that i found there's a few uh 17 of them, but I didn't think you'd sit for 17, so I just chose five. Um, one is, advocate is defined as to speak, write, or stand up for something or someone. Second one I chose was to speak, plead, or argue in favor of. The definition of an advocate, number three, is someone who fights for something or someone, especially someone who fights for the rights of others. For one that pleads in another's behalf, an intercessor. And fifth one, a person who supports others to make their voices heard or ideally for them to speak up for themselves. Now Jesus sent this advocate to you. And if you're a born again Christian, have a guess what? You have got the advocate. And everything that I've just stated, the advocate will do for you. Okay? So you see in this, the definitions, the personality of the Holy Spirit as someone who goes into bat for us. Okay, that's a, probably a, a few people might not know that thing. You know, you're going into bat. Does everybody know that little saying? I love cricket, so it just comes sort of natural. So we have someone who goes into bat for it and is willing to defend you at the highest levels. You know, Scripture tells us that the devil still goes and condemns or brings condemnation on people. But we have the advocate that goes there and says, that's a load of rubbish. He or she is a son or daughter of the most living God. Get your fingers off them and leave them alone. All right, so that's what the advocate does for you. Right in the throne room of God, okay? Right at the very presence of God. He fights for you. He declares who you are to God. We're going on a bit into chapter 14, verse 16 in John, and he says this, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Forever. Okay, that's just not, well, it's convenient. It's forever. Through the good times, the bad times, and the in-between times forever and this spirit is the spirit of truth the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you okay i will not leave you as orphans i will come to you this passage of scripture is reassuring in that Go away. I'll get the hang of this computer one of these years. The passage of Scripture is reassuring and that Jesus says the Spirit will be with us forever. And just as importantly, he specifically states that he will never leave us alone. But it's also a warning that to be able to gain the wisdom and the insights from the Advocate, we must know him in a personal way. Okay. The world cannot accept him. 
You need the personal interaction with Jesus to accept the Spirit. And for the Spirit then to teach you and tell you things that you just don't know. Okay? When I write these things, some words pop up there that I can't even hardly pronounce. So I know it's not me because I don't know them. And, but they're there. And I go, okay, I'll practice that. And hopefully when I speak it, it comes out the right way. Not always, but <laughs> close. But see, so you've got to have that personal present. Uh, personal relationship with Jesus is what Jesus spoke to Nicodemus about okay when Jesus spoke to Nicodemus he said you must be born again okay you must be born again born of the spirit okay and then the spirit comes in and helps you get rid of all the ugly stuff that you don't really need anyway because it's just baggage you know and you don't really need baggage you know, that's just as a thought. You know, if you want to get off an aeroplane quickly, don't take baggage. <laughs> and then you get to the front and you're off and out the door while everybody else is standing around that silly looking thing that goes around in circles waiting for some bloke to throw your bag out the door. Now don't take baggage with you, you get there quicker. Again, in Jesus says in verse 26, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Jesus in these passages is speaking of a gift that would come into the world on his departure and that this Advocate would teach and speak to us only those things that come from Jesus. And it's the promise that we should that should encourage us to seek after the born again experience. You know, um, one of the things that uh, um, I was told when I became a Pentecostal was that, oh, you know, they speak in tongues and and they're you know, the devil's in them and all that kind of stuff. That's a load of nonsense. <clears throat> It is, because Jesus is telling us the Holy Spirit will only tell you what the Father tells him. And this is what it says. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So don't worry and don't fear this born again experience. It's from God. God does not give his children rotten stuff. Okay? And the scripture that backs that up is, you know, if you, if you being a sinful person know how to give good things to your, fa- to your son, how much more will the Father in heaven give good things to you? So, you know, don't let people try and persuade you not to seek the good gifts of God. God wants to give them to you. He does. All you have to do is receive. Now, the Spirit is something that comes, is not something that comes and goes, okay? Indeed, the Spirit of God has been around since the beginning. Genesis 1 begins like this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So right from day one, day one the Spirit of God has been around. And then if we look in the last book of the Bible, we see this. It says, uh, I think it's chapter 20-something or other. Let me have a look. 22 verse 17. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let the one who hears say, Come. 
Let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life. So in the first book of the Bible, there's the Spirit. The last book of the Bible, the last chapter of the Bible, there's the Spirit. So the Spirit has always been around. So he knows a dance site more than I do. And he knows a dance site more than you do. But don't fear the Spirit, the free gift of God. Been around for a while. Well, you know, life has a lot of challenges. And that's kind of putting it mildly. And sometimes these challenges can leave us feeling like the whole world is on our shoulders. And, and those feelings aren't pleasant. Okay? And, and folks, let, let me just say, as a Christian, you are not exempt from those feelings. Okay? Being a Christian does not give you a free passage in life. It doesn't. I'm sorry if, I've, if that upsets you, but it doesn't. But the gift of the Holy Spirit is there to help you and overcome those things. It's a free gift. See, when I know I've done it, I keep telling you this. When, I, when I've tried to fix things on my own, and I've done it a few times, I should know better by now, but I still, <laughs> I still try to fix things my way sometimes. But I invariably make a mess of it. Not always, but sometimes I, I, I get it right. After 70 years, I should get something right. But when we rely on God, we are given the help we need to overcome those things. This is what Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 says. This is what the Spirit will give you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. If we allow the Spirit to guide us in our day-to-day -day interactions with people, we are more likely to have a favorable outcome. Not always, but more often than not. But see, even if we don't, we can be sure that our actions and reactions have been noticed, not only by the person that you're talking to, but, but also by God. You see, now, I'm going to make a statement here, and hopefully I don't get shot for it, but I'm going to, it got put in my head, so I'll put it down. Perhaps one of the reasons that churches are not growing is that people do not see Jesus in us. And look, my hand's up for that because I, I don't always react the way that brings glory to God. Okay? But perhaps I was reading um, Smith, about Smith Wigglesworth and he was a Yorkshireman. I didn't know that. I'm a Yorkshireman, so I, I should have known that. But, but that was one of his things, you see. Jesus in him. There's a story that goes about that he was on a train going to London and he was on a train and two guys got into the carriage and before the train got to London, these two guys got down on their knees in front of him, begged for forgiveness and asked, them, asked him what they must do to receive Jesus. Now, he hadn't said a word, not a word. But just the presence of Jesus in him brought conviction on these two guys. And woof, you know. How amazing is that? That the power of God can be so strong in us uh, that people can see it. And is it that strong? But... See, my, thing, my thinking is perhaps we need to go pick a bit more fruit. Human nature, such as it is, tends to get in the way. And putting the old man to death is, is pretty hard sometimes. You think you've got it nutted out and then all of a sudden it just rears its ugly head and you, 
you think, oops, I'm back to square one again. But not really, because you know, God's teaching you something, as long as you learn from it. But it's always a struggle. But see, this is what the old self was like. Again, out of Galatians. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's not a very pretty picture. And not all these things happen at once. Because they'd be certainly mixed up. But certainly, it only takes one of them to set the others off. And, and that's why, you know, living in a Christian life is, is one of constant, I guess, uh, being on your guard. Because these things can just pop up out of nowhere sometimes. And, and set you back if, you, if you're not careful. See... This way of living, or that way of living I just described, is not the way that God wanted us. He doesn't want us to live that way. And that's why Jesus, I guess, was so adamant that his leaving was going to be beneficial to believers. Because his leaving allowed the advocate to come, who is the teacher, the bringer of truth. And when these things happen, you go to the Spirit, for the truth you don't try and, and sort of nut it out in your head because nutting it out in your head all you're doing is is using humanistic or the, your old self to try and justify whatever it was that you did or didn't do but when the holy spirit tells you you're on the right path then you have peace you have peace You see, the gift of the Holy Spirit not only teaches the truth about the Scripture, but also enables us to use the talents God has given to all. Now, God has given talents to the saved and the unsaved. Okay? And he gives us, um, when we use the Spirit, we're able to use those talents to the best of our abilities. And we can use them to the glory of God. You know, there are some wonderful people around who have some brilliant talents. Some singers that, uh, you know, I couldn't even emulate, even though in my mind I sing like Pavarotti, but um, when it actually comes out, it's more like Donald Duck. But see, people who've got talents, saved and unsaved, they've got talents. But unfortunately... If you don't have the spirit, you use your talents to your own personal wants and needs. You know, history shows us that for every Mother Teresa, we have a Idi Amin. We have a saint and we have a tyrant. One worked through the Holy Spirit and the other one through some darker spirit. But see, Idi Amin had charisma. Hitler had charisma. He was able to wrap people around his little finger to do things that normal people wouldn't normally do. So charisma can be used for good or could be used for bad, but you know, God gives people these talents. God also, you know, he works through the Holy Spirit and he empowers the church with, with all these other attributes. Paul teaches in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that God also places ministry gifts within the church. See, however, without the Spirit's guidance, there will not be any benefit to the church body. It says, uh, says this, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. The church of God without the Spirit is not going to change anything. We cannot change ourselves without the Spirit's help. So how we expect to change the world without the Spirit's help, 
I think is a little far-fetched. In Western culture, our reliance on the Spirit of God has waned, I think, almost to the point that we are incapable of discernment any longer. You know, we're not really spiritual all that much. You know, you, you start talking to people about spiritual things and they think you're wacky. Or a bit loose, you've got a screw loose in your head somewhere. But the kingdom of God is all about spirituality. It's, okay, God is a spirit. And we should worship him in spirit and in truth. We need to be a church that believes in the power of the spirit to change things. We need to want to see things change and be prepared to do what we can to be a catalyst for change. Paul continues on in this passage from 1 Corinthians by saying this. He says, are all apostles, all prophets, all, all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, now eagerly desire the greater gifts. So we're all different and we all have talents. We're all you know, every one of you sitting here has talents. Some are hidden, some aren't so hidden. But you all have talents. And we should be using our talents to reach whoever we can. We're all endowed with the Spirit of God to fulfill a certain role within the body. So our one common role, though, is to support one another thereby enabling the body to function as it was designed to. And this you can do through prayer. Okay. You may not be able to go out onto the street, but you can sit in your lounge room at home and pray for the people that do. You see, I keep telling you, you so I'm blue in the face, that things don't happen without prayer. Okay, and the people that are out there on the streets or in, in our missionaries in the, the Philippines and the, the Vietnam and all the other places that we support cannot do the work that they do without prayer. Prayer is, I think, very important. It is also possibly one of the least. Uh, What's the word for it? It, it? it doesn't always, you know, have bells and whistles all over it. And it's not something that people say, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, you know. Okay. I tried to look this story up, but I, I couldn't. But I remember reading it a long time ago. And it was, it's about a, uh, a, a, a very famous evangelist who used to travel around. And he would bring hundreds and hundreds of people to the Lord. Hundreds. His meetings would just he'd call on people for salvation and they would just simply run down the front. But when I was reading his story, I noticed that in the weeks beforehand, there was a guy who would go into these towns, wherever they might be, and he'd put himself in a hotel room and he'd pray and he'd pray and he'd pray. And he, that's all he would do. He would pray for those meetings. And when the, the evangelist came, he would get up and he would go to the next meeting town. Nobody knew him. He didn't get called up onto the stage to say, oh, this is Fred and he's the... You know. But he did it all the time. And, and through the power of his prayer, I believe, was the success that this man had. And God obviously uh, anointed him as well because you can't do anything without the anointing. But the power of prayer behind this man was such that he was able to do what he did. So if you're sitting at home and, you know, and you're praying for, for people, or don't belittle it. It's a good thing. It's a great thing. And lots of things, and you'll be surprised, I dare say, 
when you get to heaven and somebody says, oh, you're the lady that prayed for me. And you go, oh, I did? <laughs> yeah, you did. And you got that person into heaven. You might never have met that person, but they know you've been praying for them. Um, we got the keyboard? No? Oh, can you tinkle the ivories for me, please? Hmm? See, so prayer, I believe, is important. It's part of the whole body. There are other functions that the body does. But to me, prayer is something that uh, I firmly believe in. So, um, but without all these other parts of the body, I mean, you know, if I didn't have two feet, I'd keep falling over. So I do need my two feet to stand up. Hey, good on you, James. <laughs> But, uh, you, you know, we all need each other for this church to function properly. For the church as a whole to function properly, we need each other. But see, praying is good, but Paul speaks about the greatest love of all and that, or the greatest gift being love. Uh, so the greatest gift of all is love. And John 3.16, now this is probably the most quoted scripture possibly ever. And this is what it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever, whoever, and that's you. You're part of the whoever. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates, hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. The death and resurrection of Jesus is fundamental to our faith. But it is the power of the Spirit that enables us to live our lives in the manner that brings glory to God. Without the Spirit, I am just, hmm, who knows what I'd be. Thinking back before I knew, before I had the Spirit, uh, it was probably not very pretty. And I probably don't want to go back there. Well, in fact, I don't want to go back there. But when the Spirit came, things changed. Things changed. <laughs> yeah, I used to have a, a pretty interesting vocabulary and uh, that changed. I used to have a very interesting uh, um, short temper being a Yorkshireman. <laughs> I think it comes inherent with, the, uh, with, the, with being a pom, I think. But, but see, I mean, all that sort of thing has changed. And it's good. It's all changed for the better, I think. And, uh, um, you know. But to be able to live our lives in a manner that brings glory to God, we require it requires that we have the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit that enables us to return to God when we have strayed from the path that he has laid out before us. You know, it's not always easy to stay on the path. Narrow is the path that leads to life and wide is the path that leads to destruction. So it's not always easy 
to stay on the path. But God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, even when we've strayed from the path, God will bring you back. Yeah. I praise God for that because I look at uh, family and friends and I think, okay, well, you know, they once were with the Lord and they strayed a bit, but I, I, I have faith in God that through the power of the Spirit and through prayer, He will bring them back. Now, it may take a while, and it might not always be in my timing because my timing is like, can I have it now? And God says, no, just wait a while. <laughs> They've got a few things in their life that they need to sort out, to get right, to get right with, to, to uh, you know, they're just simply not ready at this time. But when I'm ready, they'll come. So you've got to leave it with God and you've got to believe God knows everything and God's timing is perfect. And ours are sometimes very selfish. See, it is the spirit that brings conviction and not condemnation. Uh, if, if you're convicted, then that's from God. If you're feeling condemned, then that ain't from God. God does not bring condemnation. He brings conviction. He will convict you of things, but he won't condemn you for what you've done. The greatest gift of God to mankind is Jesus. And the greatest gift of Jesus is the Holy Spirit that enables all true believers to rise above everything that the enemy would throw at us. Okay. Now it doesn't matter that you perish as long as you have the Spirit because you know where you're going to be. Eternity with Jesus is far, far better, far, far better than eternity in the other place. And the other place does exist because Jesus tells us it does. Okay, and, and just because we might not like the idea of hell, it doesn't make it any less true. One thing I know about the Bible, you just can't cherry prick what you like and what you don't like. Genesis 1 to Revelation, whatever. <laughs> you, it's all there. You just simply can't start ripping out pages and thinking, I don't like that bit. Let, let me throw that bit away. It don't work that way. But praise God, the Spirit brings us truth. So, the last word I will say is, it is truly the gift that keeps on giving. Amen. If you, uh, we've already had a prayer time, but if people want to uh, come out for more prayer, then please do so. Uh, um, and we're only too happy to pray, pray for, with people for anything at all. Uh, we've got uh, Annie who's going to come and, and lead us through our prayer requests. And then uh, after Annie's been if you want to come out, come on out and we'll uh, pray for you. Otherwise, um, tea, coffee in the foyer. Don't congregate in the foyer, please, if you can avoid it. Just uh, um, grab your cuppa and come back in here and chat. We love people chatting, okay? Don't think that we're kicking you out. We're not kicking you out. We just have to be COVID aware that we don't congregate too many people in the foyer. So please just come on, come on out. I bless you all. Have a great day day, a great week and we'll uh, see you next Sunday. Bless you all. Praise the Lord. Thank you Jesus. Let us all stand and reach out for this prayer request this morning. Thank you Lord. Father as we come to you in Jesus name we declare healing for Paul in Gugong Lord. We pray Lord for Pablo in Bubsy. We pray Lord that you will go before them and Restore them to good health, Lord. We pray, Lord, for Mary's five children, Lord. We declare healing and salvation, Jesus. So keep speaking to their hearts, Lord, till they find your peace. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord, for Daniel's friend, Mel. We pray, we pray that you will bless her in every way, Jesus. We pray for her salvation, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that 
Michael, um, Daniel is witnessing to um, his friends. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord. We continue praying for um, Michael Beb- Benson of Canberra, Lord. We continue praying, Lord, for the healing of his heart condition. Strengthen him, Lord. And we pray that you'll go before him and restore him to good health too, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord, for Gordon not Denton of um, Penrith too, Lord. We continue praying for healing, declaring the healing, Lord. And we, and we pray, Lord, for guidance for the surgeon's hands too, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you will restore him to good health. We pray for complete healing and a quick recovery, Jesus. We also pray, Lord, for Steve Riley, that you'll bless him in every way, Lord. And go before him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Before Derek does a benediction, um, I'll just sit down for a moment. Uh, This Easter, Resurrection Sunday, especially for those watching via live stream. God bless you. Welcome today. And for those of us that may be visiting today, maybe you have never asked Jesus into your life. And maybe they've all just disappeared, the visitors, but uh, there's a few left here. Let us bow head and let's pray a sinner's prayer together and uh, receive Jesus into our life. And I think that's the first thing to do, to become a Christian, to be given eternal life, to have power over death to know where you're going in life. And uh, after that, you can learn to pray. You can learn to read your Bible. You can learn to worship God and learn a whole brand new life that goes with the born-again believer. And if you're not sure you're going to heaven or uh, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, just in this moment between you and God, I'll lead you in a prayer. And if you pray that prayer, that sinner's prayer, and really believe it, in your heart then he'll come into your heart and that'll be the start of a brand new journey for you I'm not asking you to join my church or not asking I'm asking you to receive Jesus and be you'll be very welcome to join our church of course very welcome indeed let's pray together dear heavenly father I do believe in Jesus this resurrection Sunday I believe he died on the cross for my sins, that he shed his blood, that I might be washed totally clean. I believe on the third day he rose again. And I believe he is alive today. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And this morning I opened my heart I say and ask, forgive me, Lord, of all my sin. Help me to live for you. I invite you into my life now. And I close the door of my heart. And I thank you that you're in my heart. Fill me with the gift that keeps on giving, the Holy Spirit, that your presence be with me now and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. If you prayed that prayer in here this morning or prayed that via video and you want a little bit of help or material, you can simply um, text something in the comments and we'll make sure we get something to you to help you with that if you're living in another town or somewhere else. Uh, even on the other side of the world. And if you're here today and you've prayed that prayer and you don't have a Bible or you'd like a a little bit of material to help you with your walk, just come and tap me on the shoulder and I'll 